In this video, we're gonna go over some do's and don'ts for femoral nerve flossing. That's that nerve in the front of your hip down to the front of the thigh. We'll go over some rules of thumb about what to do and what not to do, and then two ways to do a femoral nerve floss. Hey everyone, my name's Mandy. I'm at Performance Place Sports Care down here in Costa Mesa, California. We're gonna go over some femoral nerve flossing rules today. This is a really good technique for people who have had dull, achy, or tingling pain in the front of the leg here, usually on one side, especially if we're starting from up here in the hip and then moving down to stay above the knee. For a lot of people that has to do with nerve entrapment, perhaps that nerve isn't gliding quite right around the surrounding structures of muscle, fascia, and tissue. This is a really good technique for people who have had pain, either burning, achy, dull, um, or tingling in the front of the hip here and down into the front of the thigh. It should always stay above the knee if you're in this case, and if it goes below, go ahead and check out some of our other videos on this channel. Femoral, femoral nerve flossing has been really popular lately to promote some glide between the nerve and the surrounding structures, so that's muscle or fascia or ligaments. That glide allows our flexibility to increase. It can increase range of motion, and moreover, it can decrease pain in an area that you've had kind of an overuse syndrome happening in. This is really common at the hip and in the front of the thigh, especially with endurance athletes or people who do repetitive motions, so that's almost any sport, so weightlifting, baseball, softball, gymnastics, things like that. So some rules of thumb before we get into the actual two nerve flossing techniques for the femoral nerve. Rule of thumb number one is a nerve floss should never hurt and it should never increase symptoms. If it's hurting, that doesn't mean that you're getting in there really deep or anything like that. It means it just hurts. And a nerve floss, think of a piece of floss, should just be moving the nerve back and forth from the two points that you're moving. It shouldn't actually stretch the nerve, that's called a tensioner. That is a different progression of a neurodynamic nerve mobilization. But if you're in pain, we're probably not doing tensioners right away. We're doing a floss or a glide, and it shouldn't hurt at all. If it's hurting and it's increasing symptoms, you need to move back in the progression. And we're gonna start in a pretty protective progression here today, later in this video. But again, if it hurts, you need to move backwards. Second rule of thumb is there should be no tingling or numbness associated with it. Again, I've had people who come in and say, hey, I got this stretch really well. I felt all those good tingles. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Tingles are not what we want. Again, nerves don't really like stretching. Later in the progression of nerve flossing, gliding, and tensioners, we do allow the nerve to, to tolerate a bit of stretch, but we're not there yet if we're in pain. So shouldn't cause numbness, should not increase symptoms. And the last rule of thumb is it shouldn't feel like too much of a stretch, if a stretch at all. The most stretchy of nerve glides that I've seen gets to about a 30% stretch, which is pretty light in the grand scheme of things, and it doesn't mean that you're like tearing your muscle out of your body. That really good hamstring stretch is not the feeling that we're going for when we're doing a nerve floss. In essence, most of the time, nerve flosses should feel like nothing. You should feel kind of silly doing it because it doesn't feel like you're doing anything. But when you test your painful movement before and test it again after you do some nerve flossing, it should feel better. So the actual exercise itself or the nerve floss itself shouldn't feel like much, and it definitely shouldn't feel like a crazy stretch in whatever you're stretching there. Okay, so two ways to do a femoral nerve glide or floss. First way, we're gonna start on our belly. Go ahead and follow along with this video. Pause it for a second and test that painful movement where you feel symptoms into the front of the thigh, and then resume and let's do this together. So we're gonna lay on our belly here, all the way down. We're gonna prop ourselves up on our elbows here. You can even go all the way up onto your hands if you feel like you need a little bit of like stretch in the back of the back here. So we're gonna start on our belly, forearms on the ground, and if you're somebody who's very flexible or you feel like you want a little bit deeper of an exercise here, we can actually go up onto the hands. I'm gonna start down here on my forearms because I'm having some front of the thigh symptoms and this is the most protective position for me. For, from here, we're gonna take the leg, let's say it's our right leg that's in pain, and we're gonna go head down, foot up, and then switch. These should move together and it should be about this pace. Again, you can follow along here. We're gonna do about 20 of these and then retest that painful movement. It's totally okay if you feel your back arching when your heel is towards your butt here 
that's normal and it has to do with stretching all those muscles and nerves in the area that we're working. Let's say that's 20 here, go ahead and retest that painful movement. And if you found that this is useful, you can use this for the next week or so. Past a week, we may be getting some rebound effects and we do need to progress into more like tension tolerance and sliding mechanics at the place that you're having symptoms. But it is good for you to use for about a week. If you feel like you've plateaued and you've been doing this for a week, go ahead and reach out to us. We need to create an individualized plan to progress you further to make sure it's safe for your body. But in summary, rules of thumb for femoral nerve flossing and really mostly any nerve floss in general, it shouldn't increase symptoms at all, it shouldn't hurt. It should not create numbness or tingling in the area that you're working. And it really shouldn't feel like a stretch. And if it does, it should only be, you know, 30% or under. Shouldn't feel like a crazy stretch, like you're ripping your muscles out of your body. Hope this helped. If it did, leave a comment below or reach out to us. Hope to hear from y'all soon.